it's time to get back to astronomy. In this chapter, we're going to focus on the motion of the Earth and how it affects what we see in the sky. We're going to look at the motion of the Earth. We'll start with the Earth's daily spin, then move on to the annual motion around the Sun. We'll finish up by looking at seasons. Let's start with the Earth's motion through space. There are two important ways the Earth moves. It spins in 24 hours. This defines our day. It also travels around the Sun in 365 days. This is what defines our year. We'll look at these two in a lot more detail, but I should mention that these are not the only ways the Earth is moving. Our spin axis, effectively the line between the North and South Poles, changes very slowly over a 26,000 year period. We call this the precession of the poles, and it changes what constellations are visible in any given season. Our whole solar system orbits the Milky Way galaxy at a speed of 200 kilometers per second. The galaxy is so big that it takes us 200 million years just to go around it once. This motion, along with the motion of the other stars, changes the shapes of constellations over millions of years. Finally, our galaxy is moving through space in the general direction of the constellation Hercules at a speed of 600 kilometers per second. All of this shows us something important. It's impossible to sit still. You are always moving, whether you notice it or not. There are several things we see in the sky that result from the fact that we spin on our axis each day. The most obvious thing is that the sun appears to rise and set every day. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. The stars, the moon, and the planets also rise in the east and set in the west for exactly the same reason. We're on a spinning globe. Have a look at the globe here and try to imagine which way the Earth is spinning to make this happen. Just click the mouse when you've got your answer. So, did you figure it out? If the sun appears to move to the west, then we must be spinning towards the east. One other effect of our daily spin is time zones. It's sometimes said that Christopher Columbus discovered that the Earth is round. This is not true. People had known that the Earth was round for over 1,800 years by then. But nowadays, if you want to show the Earth is round, it's easy. Just pick up your phone and call somebody on another part of the globe and ask them what time it is there. It won't be the same time as here simply because we're on a round, spinning globe. Time of day means location on the Earth. We define noon as being when the sun is overhead but the sun is always over some place on the globe, so it's always noon somewhere. Similarly, it's always midnight somewhere. Have a look at this drawing of the Earth and Sun. We're looking down on the Earth's North Pole, and of course, the drawing isn't to scale. As the Earth spins, there's always half the globe in daylight and half experiencing night. So if California is in the spot labeled noon, then the east coast is a little ways to the left of that. Europe and Africa are past the spot labeled sunset, and Asia is fully over on the night side. This also affects what we see in the sky. If you want to see what's in the sky over the east coast, just wait a few hours and we'll have the same view. Another way of saying that is that moving east or west on the globe only changes what time it is not what you will see at a given time. So if we see a star overhead at 9 p.m., then someone on the other side of the globe will see the same star overhead when it's 9 p.m. where they are. Let's look at daily motion in some more detail. We've just talked about how moving east or west doesn't really affect our view, just the time. Now, what about moving north or south? To understand this, we're going to have to talk about an idea called the celestial sphere. The celestial sphere is an imaginary sphere centered on the Earth. The way it works is that we pretend that all the stars are just attached to this giant sphere, and that the daily motion we see is just this sphere spinning around us all the time. 
500 years ago, this was our standard model of what daily motion is. While we know it's not true now, it's still a useful way to help us visualize how stars appear to move in our sky. On any spinning ball, there are a few special locations, the poles and the equator. The poles are the stationary points that the ball spins around, while the equator is the line halfway between those poles. That's what defines the north and south poles and the equator of the Earth. Since we're now pretending that the Earth is sitting still and it's the celestial sphere spinning around us, then the celestial sphere must have north and south celestial poles, as well as a celestial equator. The celestial poles are just an extension of the Earth's north and south poles out into space. Since the celestial poles are stationary points, it means that the sky appears to spin around them every day. This is a really powerful idea. It means that if you know where one of the celestial poles is in your sky, you can figure out how everything else will appear to move, because it will all just seem to rotate around that one point. So, now we can use the idea of a celestial sphere to figure out how our view changes as we move north and south on the Earth. Let's start by assuming we're standing at the Earth's equator. Someone standing there would see the North Celestial Pole right on their northern horizon, and the South Celestial Pole right on the southern horizon. So here's the North Celestial Pole on the horizon. As the Earth turns, stars appear to rotate around this point. We only see a star when it comes up above the horizon, so to us, it looks like the star rises in the east and sets in the west. This is exactly what we described earlier. So when we started talking about daily motion making things rise and set, we were really talking about the view from the Earth's equator. Now let's change our viewpoint so that we're standing on the North Pole. Here, the North Celestial Pole is straight over our heads. Once again, stars will appear to rotate around this point. But now, we aren't looking anywhere near the horizon. So in fact, stars just go in circles above us. Even when we do look close to the horizon, the stars will still be moving parallel to the ground, all around us in a circle. As it happens, there is a fairly bright star that is very close to the North Celestial Pole in the sky. It's Polaris, the North Star. Polaris isn't the brightest star in the sky, but it's important because it stays stationary even as everything else in the sky rotates around it. So at the poles, stars don't rise and set. They just move in circles in the sky. We'll talk more about what the sun does when we get to seasons. We've just seen that at the equator, the north celestial pole is right on the northern horizon. At the north pole, the celestial pole is right above our heads. Before going to the next slide, I'd like you to take a moment and ask yourself, what you think is going to happen when you're standing somewhere between the North Pole and the equator. For example, what about here in California? Where will the North Celestial Pole be in our sky? And what will that make the stars appear to do? When you've figured out an answer, click forward to the next slide. So, have you figured it out? If we're between the North Pole and the equator, then the North Celestial Pole won't be straight overhead, and it won't be on the horizon. Instead, it will be partway up in the northern sky. Since it's not on the horizon, the stars close to the Celestial Pole will appear to go around in circles. We call these stars circumpolar, and they stay above the horizon all the time. The farther you look away from the North Celestial Pole, the bigger the circles get. Eventually, these circles get big enough that they hit the horizon. Any star beyond that point rises in the east and sets in the west. As you move farther north, the celestial pole gets higher in your sky. This means that more stars will be up all the time and fewer rise and set. Lastly, there is a group of stars around the south celestial pole that will stay below your horizon all the time. There's one labeled on the diagram as, this star is never seen. As you move closer to the equator, the region you never see gets smaller and smaller, until you reach the equator, 
and all stars from the north to the south celestial poles rise and set. As you continue further south, the story reverses, and you see things revolving around the south celestial pole, while the north star and the stars around it drop below the horizon. Here's a link to the search window for the Astronomy Picture of the Day website. From here, select one of the Star Trails pictures from the site and answer these questions on it. If you're not sure whether the picture you've chosen works, contact your instructor to see what they think. Here's another Making Sense table. Go through what we've just learned about how the sky appears to move from different locations on Earth to fill in this table. 